Hi guys, so like many other people I've been waiting for my Oculus Rift DK2 to arrive and oh, 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 what finally turned up but yes DK2. So you probably saw one of my earlier videos of the DK1 in Elite Dangerous um, so I thought what we'll do is let's take a look at the DK2 in it and see what improvements have come. Um, a quick going over then of the hardware first uh, for those people who don't know um, the DK2, as the name implies, is a revision of the development kit. Uh, the first one, the DK1, was fairly low res compared to this. What the DK2 brings to the party, really the main thing, is a high, higher resolution, uh, faster refreshing screen. So now we've got 1920 by 1080 pixels uh, screen in here. Um, it's 75 hertz refresh rate. Uh, it's a low persistence OLED screen. It's actually off one of the Samsung Galaxy Note um, devices. Um, in terms of the, the physical device, it's um, slightly thinner um, than the old one, but, but a slightly larger, bulkier, I suppose. It, it's marginally heavier, but not in an uncomfortable way or anything like that. Um, you can see what they've done is they've greatly improved the cable management, so now the cables come out and run over the back of your head, a single cable here. Um, the power button is up here on the device now, and the separate control box that you had as part of the DK1 is gone. Everything is now inside the headset. So um, so this cable run is now just a simple HDMI port, USB cable on the end, um, and a power source if you need to use it for the, um, there's now a USB hub inside the headset basically. Um, you'll also notice, so, so the main difference is the screen. All the other usual features are here, the adjustable um, distance from the screen for uh, glass wearers, uh, glasses wearers, uh, replaceable lenses, again, two, two eye cups for, uh, for different for short-sighted people like myself. Um, but the other big change is away from the headset is you'll notice there's a camera up here. It's just an infrared camera and what that is doing is it's tracking um, this from a positional perspective. Now you won't make it out on the camera, some, some of the cameras you can do, but there are basically various LEDs, sh infrared LEDs shining through this casing. Um, you can't see them by, by the naked eye, but this camera is then tracking those points um, and they, they extend around the sides of the case as well um, so that it can monitor the position of the headset in space. So internally you've got some accelerometers, magnetometers, gyroscopes that are measuring the movement, the rotational movement of the headset but then the camera and the dots helps it um, understand the position in space. Uh, whereas the DK1 didn't have that camera thing, it just had the rotational movement that it could track. A very minor point, but you know, it brings just a little extra dimension to the game, which we'll see in a bit. So, um, in the grand scheme of things, that's kind of all that's really changed. Um, uh, you know, there's some niceties. There's some the software is um, has got a few more features in it, but but really, there's the two, those are the two um, main changes: the screen and the tracking. So, let's fire up Elite Dangerous and let's go and see how that. Uh, that, those differences map in the game. The one thing I'll do is, for the benefit of YouTubers, I will cut down the, the, the stereoscopic vision to just a single um, view of the cockpit. Obviously, to try and relay um, 3D st stereoscopic vision to you on YouTube, unless you've got um, an Oculus Rift, is, is going to be impossible. So you'll have to bear with me and hopefully my descriptions can help um, uh, help you understand what the difference is. Um, okay. So let's fire up the game and don my headgear and we'll uh, see you in there. So here we are in game and the first thing that stands out straight away is the improvement in the resolution and it's it's a very simple thing but it, it's a, a key improvement for the DK2 is that now I can actually read the text on my screens here. Before with the DK1 if you watch my early video you'd understand you, you couldn't really play Elite as a long-term kind of um, experience on the DK1. It was fine to hop in for 10 minutes and have it and go, ooh, wow, look at the, the fancy 3D, but you couldn't sit and play it. Now with the DK2, you can. You can you can actually use this as a, as a proper play experience. So the resolution, massively improved. Um, the, the other main thing, obviously, is the lateral, um, well, the kind of translational um, monitoring of the head, headset. So what this means is that I can now kind of look down over the edge of my seat uh, and I can kind of look over things. Um, from a tactical perspective in the game, this adds very little, but, but what it does add is, is that kind of um, um, immersive experience. So you really feel like your head is, is um, 
is really in this Viper ship. You can look around and you can actually kind of look out underneath the windows and round them and so on and so forth. And, and so it's just that extra little um, depth that it's added which just makes the experience more enjoyable. Um, and you can, you know, you can kind of really kind of look around this craft now and look all the way behind, back to the door, um, and check yourself out. Um, so let's go and find some combat and see how the rift helps in that sense. this kind of ability to kind of track targets much better. So this guy's attacking me. Probably because I'm wanted. So now you've got this, this that kind of head tracking really lets you uh, move your head about and just track those targets better. So you find yourself doing exactly what you would do in real life. You know, you kind of get your head up to the window and, and take a look around. Target I need to get out of here quick. Shields offline. The feds are on my case. So, from a navigational perspective, it's also very useful because you can actually kind of look around a bit more. So here we can see the targets over there somewhere. That's where we're heading. Foster Research Lab. And it's very, it does, you don't need to learn any skills, which I suppose if you draw some comparisons with head tracking, uh, I mean obviously one of the obvious ones I'm going to draw a comparison with is head tracker. You, you have to train your head to kind of move while you're still looking at a screen um, um, to, to do your the, the, the head tracking um, view. At least with this, it just falls very naturally. I want to look over there, I'm just going to move my head and look there. It, you don't need to learn any any kind of skill to operate it. It just works exactly as you would expect it to. Um, you can see the planet names now are much easier to make out. The distances, again, because of that higher resolution, they're now readable, which is which is nice. Ship released. Engines engaged. Get a real feel for the size of these stations now as well. And you can kind of do sensible manoeuvres as well with this ability to just kind of look sideways and really see where your ship is. You can uh, you can do some much more accurate flight positioning. You know, you can kind of put your ship right where you want it to be if you needed to. Can really kind of get close up to these uh, these models and enjoy them in their full 3D glory. So there you have it. The main improvements really are those graphical improvements. That's that's the big game changer for DK2 and with Elite in particular. You know there are games that are perfectly playable on the DK1, Lunar Lander being a prime example. Um, but but for Elite it really needed that extra resolution. It could do with more, 
but at least now at the DK2 levels, it's playable. You know, you can sit there and you can play for an hour or more and, and actually enjoy the game. The, um, the, the head tracking adds that extra dimension. It, it, you know, it's, it's kind of like the gravy on the top. It's not the, the, the be all and end all of the game, but just having that kind of extra level of uh, immersion and, and um, perception of moving your head in space just adds a little bit of um, you know, so a little bit of stardust on the sprinkled on top of the game. Um, so there, I hope that was useful. I think the main thing to take away is is you know things looking promising in the virtual reality world, um, and uh, I'm sure the final consumer rift version is going to be pretty awesome. It, it's awesome to play on the DK2. If you haven't had a chance uh, and you get one, do try it out. Uh, particularly with Elite Dangerous, it's it's got to be one of the kind of key games to show off Oculus at the moment. Um, on that note, I hope that was useful for all those people who are waiting for their DK2s and can't wait. Um, you know, that's probably not helped one bit, has it? Um, for those who are wondering if it's really worth it, yeah, you know, if, if you're going to play Elite a lot, probably. Otherwise, I would just wait for the consumer version. Obviously, it'll be a, a much, uh, much more rewarding experience even than this. So, on that note, we shall see you next time, and uh, fly safe, Commanders. Bye-bye.